and it was funny because I was probably only 15 years old, which is like, it was perfect because I, at that time was on my way, well on my way to the Olympia stage. I just, it was a formality. <laughs> like I just had to right. Yeah, I didn't right. really have a plan. Like the plan was just you go to the gym and you train and then you eat bur- like two double whoppers at Burger King. But you had the most awesome workout because you got a pump. It's those days when nothing else mattered. You did everything right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to It's Just Bodybuilding. Myself, Big Ron Partlow. Dusty Hanshaw's not here today. So we got Skip Hill, legendary Skip Hill, <laughs> over from BSG. And then, of course, the producer, Scott McNally. Good to see you guys. What's up, man? So Very so weird. Ma- Very yeah. weird with you bringing the show in. I actually thought you were kidding. And yeah. I was like, Scott laugh because I thought yeah, yeah, Scott yeah. brought all the shows in. Nope, not oh, this one. Oh, okay. Here we go. We're yeah. learning. We do have to do one thing. We'll see, we'll see if uh, Skip gets this. Yep. We're going to ask everyone to like, share, subscribe, comment, and... Ring the bell. Ring, ring there the bell. you go. He ring knew. He knew. <laughs> okay. We got it. We got it. Ring the bell. Remember, I am mute.com, proud sponsor of the show. Obviously, they've taken care of me and Dusty for an awfully long time and a uh, very hardcore brand that wants to be here for the Think Big Bodybuilding Network and for It's Just Bodybuilding. So, um, thanks to Mutant. Go to immutant.com. Use Big Ron 20 or Dusty 20 for your 20% off. Okay, everyone, get your all in, get your ISO surge, and everyone should get on the gear. Lots okay, gear. we're done. Let's get to the show. Skip, welcome, man. Thank you. I scooted up a little bit. I think you could tell I moved a little closer to the camera to take up more space because I'm sure that Dusty. <laughs> Takes up. He takes so up a lot of space. Dusty, Dusty yeah. likes a full. He likes his beard to sort of frame the whole picture. He gets gotcha. So close. Yeah. Well, I can't do the yeah. beard thing. I haven't matured I, enough yeah. yet to do that. Well, you technically have the biggest brain of the three of us, so your head should look the largest in the shot. <laughs> so, I do I wear a very that's... large helmet, so there, there is go. that. Yeah. There used to be a joke when I played football. They'd say, uh, "What would you? What would you choose? A million dollars or Ron's helmet full of quarters?" <laughs> Go the helmet every time. <laughs> yeah, a <the> big head. <laughs> okay. Um, so, how are you guys doing? We're like mid December here. We just had the Christmas party at the gym. Um, we're in that part of the year now. Are you, how are you guys doing? I don't know. I mean, Scott made me pull all three of the blinds because it's so sunny here. He doesn't want to see all that sun and all that warmth. I've got my fan on over here because it's He's a little warm. He's making you wear a hoodie, pretending it's yeah, cold. Yeah, exactly. I do have a hoodie on, so there is that contradiction, I guess. But uh, no, it's, everything's good here. Getting ready for uh, – we're going to Milwaukee. We'll be cold for Christmas. We're going to Milwaukee because all the kids are there. We get together every year there. Uh, go see them. It's It's much less expensive. It's cheaper for us to go there than to fly – all of your kids down here where it's sunny. So we make that track, but we enjoy it. It's fun. We're looking forward to it. That's funny. You know what I think of every time I hear Milwaukee? I don't know why. It's just a stupid little kid thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I remember I when I was going. a little, I remember when I was a little kid, the only TV show I knew that was in yep. Milwaukee was Laverne and Shirley. Yep. Right, me too. Me too. Shots brewery. Yep. Yeah. And so <laughs> yeah. I just, every time I th- hear Milwaukee my whole life, I was just thinking Laverne and Shirley. I don't know. It's just so funny. You've got so funny everyone under 35 going, what the hell? Laverne what the hell is yeah. that? What? Yeah, now exactly. Google it and they still won't know. They still won't. They'll be like, I've never <laughs> yeah. seen this show. I don't know what the hell this is. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course I put together that the teams of Milwaukee brewers. So I just, oh, it's a beer yeah. town, you know, like, yeah, it's funny. I yep. just think a beer. We're going to do some, I, we're going to do, so I had a couple of great Christmas related questions, but you wanted to do some <laughs> listener questions first? No, no, no. You to do? You've got, I know you had some prep co- coach questions. Oh, yeah. That okay. you wanted to ask I thought it. we were doing those. At, we'll do yeah, those we first. Should, we should launch with that stuff because that's stuff okay. people always want to hear. We do have all those listener questions that you guys left on the last episode. And plus, yes. we're going to need, we're going to need comments for the next episode too. So leave those, you yeah. know, comment on YouTube, all that stuff helps to boost the show. And uh, I'm excited too for your fun questions. We'll get Skip uh, cutting loose a little bit on this one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want I want to ask Skip how things are going with his thoughts on training frequency because I know you know his training style is is has a higher frequency than a lot of other people's training style. Correct. 
Well, not right now. <laughs> not right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm so in not, this. Like, this um, I've caused quite a quite an internet uproar, and I say <laughs> internet uproar as if you know BSE is the BSG is the only like the corner of the internet that I you know that I know. Like it's this massive thing, but I train was training every other week. <laughs> and I've been doing this and I just made this change a couple weeks ago or about three weeks ago to where now I've moved to train two weeks on and one week oh, off. Oh, no kidding. You didn't tell us that yet. Yeah. Well, yeah. And you know, part of it is just because people get fired. As soon as you get outside of the box, if you get too far outside of the box, people get very, very uncomfortable and they don't yeah. like it. They're like, you just get back inside the box. We don't like it. it yeah. What are you doing? Is yeah. It's we not going to work. You. <laughs> yeah, I've trained for for four years, and and I just know that's not going to work. You shouldn't be doing that. So I get all this this unsolicited four advice. Years. Yeah, it's just a weird. It's, it's like I, I like don't know. Number. I've for yeah, forty years. You listen to the podcast because you want to know what I think. I tell you what I think, and then it's odd and it's awkward and it's challenging and you don't like it. But anyway, I step back to do that to kind of increase recovery and just. I don't know. Enjoy being injury free, and then I figured what I would do, and they missed this part of it. I was going to back way off and then I was going to build in. I didn't think that, it, yes, training one week on and one week off is going to like go forever and it's going to be great. But what I did was I noticed that after I took a week off, I'd always come back so much stronger and my joints felt great. And, and it wasn't that I felt like crap before. But it, I just felt so good. So I'm like, you know, and I kept saying over the years, I'm like, oh, I should train every other week. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? Why don't I just give this a shot? It's the end of the off season. I'm coming off a cycle to TRT and everything. You know, you want to maximize your recovery at that time anyway. I'm coming into the holidays. I'll do a little bit of traveling. So I said, I'll give myself about, you know, three, maybe four months of this. And, and it worked great for about six weeks. And then I'm itching. I'm, I'm, it was a scheduling thing, too, because when you, if you travel enough, this part I did not see. And I shoot things from all different angles. I didn't see this coming. I had to be at the O for a week. That was the week that I had to train. The next week, I'd be home, and I'm like, With, oh, I don't yeah. have to train. And then I traveled the next week, and I had to train. I'm like, what? So I wanted to change it around, but I couldn't because I'm very black and white, and I want to keep the variables the same. So it became this battle that I'm like, this kind of sucks and the mental approach was difficult because yes you're on for a week and you're killing it and believe me when i say and, and you guys will get this but i so i'm saying this to the listeners when you when you are only training one week on and one week off you will kill it that week and i think i train pretty hard anyway but if you're off for a week and you know you're coming back for a week and you're going to be off again you're going to you're going to kill some you're going to kill some shit so, so the training was very intense I need one thing quickly mapped out just for context. Uh -huh. What does the, what does a week of training look like on the split? Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And it's everything once, once a week, it's a typical, like a chest shoulders and it's a back rear delts traps, then it's legs and it's arms. So it's nothing profound, uh, you know, or, or complicated or unique in that okay. sense. So, and then I was recovering well prior. It's just one of those things that I thought, you know, it, it, look, how do we learn? You know, most of, especially, especially us, we have been around for a long time. We just do things that other people either don't want to do or they don't think about. And sometimes people will think that that's silly, but I have always said that I think that's how I, how I learned. Hell, that's how I got to the point where people are like, well, yeah, I don't do things terribly orthodox. So... <laughs> You know, it's it's one of those it, aberrant is, is really what it is. You're, you're doing things that are different. And that's where you learn other people, this generation. And I'm not knocking it, but they go to the studies and, and they right. don't have that trial and error thing that we were forced to use before there were a lot of opinions out there. Well, we have muscle magazines. That's it. Well, yeah. I wrote. I wrote all those, I say all those articles. I wrote a lot of those articles in the muscle magazines. I'm like, I'm the, I'm the one writing these articles now. So how do you get that information? How do you learn as much as you can possibly learn? I don't like the studies. I like when studies back up something that I've done or something that I thought, but that's, that's about it. I think the experience is vital and that's what I'm doing. I'm getting outside of the box. That's, 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 that's very interesting. That it, it's sort of, you know, on a much lesser level, 
I've done a little bit of that type of adapting too in the in the last, especially last year or two, you know, because my training partner is, you know, he's training all out to, you know, try to earn a pro card at nationals, right? So when we train together, like the workouts are all out, like we're going hard. And, you know, I'm just on a little bit of TRT. So <laughs> sometimes I feel like, you know, um, when I'll have like a mutant trip coming up, like the Olympia or something. And I'll think, well, geez, like I could use a couple extra days. Like I'm not forcing myself to train while I'm away as I'll maybe right. go work out like once on a four day trip or, you know, if we're gone five days, I might train if we film a video and that's like my only workout of the whole trip. Right. And, and I've actually found that when I get back to town and we hook up for Monday workout, mm -hmm. I'll get like an extra rep on, on the incline that day. Exactly. Like there's been specific lots of times where he's gone. Oh, that was a good set. Like, you know, your opener set, you know, your <laughs> first yeah. big set. He'll be like, oh, that was a good set. Like he said that to me and I'll make a note. I'm like, huh, I haven't trained for four days, you yep. know, and and it's just being like, you know, being Mr. T Mr. TRT now and still wanting to train really hard when I am in the gym. There's just that little extra little pocket of recovery that I'll, I'll grab here and there, like whenever I can. And I don't I don't ever like I used to make myself train exactly the same on the road, right? You right. go away on a five day trip for mutant and like you're training at like 11 o'clock at night and maybe six o'clock in the morning. And like, you know, the workouts are okay. You might have one great one and maybe you even have one crappy one. And, and, and I just said, you know what? I don't have to do that anymore. Right. Like, exactly. I don't have to do that. It might even be better to not bother. Yep. And, and I was progressing I great. I, I, that's the thing. What happened was I noticed that after doing it for I, three or four cycles, uh, which, you know, three or four cycles is, you know, I consider one week on one week off a, a, a cycle, I guess, mesocycle, whatever yeah. the term is. But it then it, here's the thing. And this is just me being completely transparent. It wasn't better than training every week, hmm. but it was the same. So then I had to ask a question and, and this is where people started to come back and they're like, well, if it's not better, what? no, but you don't understand. You're not logic. You're not looking at this logically. If it's not better, but it's not worse, then why would I want to train twice as much? So even the mental component of it, it's one of those things where I said, if I'm going to grow, I'd rather be in the gym. I think we can all agree it's it's therapeutic. It's something that we have come to. We're regimented. We're struck, highly structured individuals. Routine is everything. I'm the guy who misses an exit on the way home, and, and I am anxious until I turn around and get on the path that I was on before. That may be age, right. but nonetheless, that's that's the regiment. That's the routine. Yeah, so yeah. we all feel better in that groove. But I also don't want to waste time in the gym either. I'm, I'm 53 years old. At 24, I didn't care. It, it took six hours to train and I was going to get bigger. I was going to spend six hours in the gym. I know better than that. We all know better than that. So now I have other things I could be doing. I could be working. I could be spending time with my wife. I could do something else that, quite frankly, we all enjoy training. I do it out of obligation. If I'm being honest, I like it when I'm there. But I'd rather yeah, do yeah. something else if I can grow and progress and get other things done. So... And then we get hit with passion. Well, you're just not a passionate. You don't love it anymore. <laughs> and I just I'd do it for 40 years and come back and we'll talk. Because until then, I just don't even care to hear it from you. <laughs> so it was yeah. working great. But I, I the point is, I end up changing it. I'm two weeks on, one week off now. It's, say it's working a little better. It's it's roughly the same. But I haven't had enough time to really assess this. I think it's only been, well, this is my second week. So the four, third, third meso cycle of this. So, but I'll take okay. it through the end of the year. I'm having, I'm having fun with it. It's a lot easier to on one off than it is one on one off. I bet. Psychologically. Yeah. I yeah. bet. Yeah. yeah. And completely off, not cruise, not light, not, I mean, it's cruise in the sense that I'm staying. I, I classify cruise workouts or deload, whatever the word anybody wants to use as in two ways, either you take it proactively and when you take it proactively, then you still come in and you train light. I think Dusty does the same thing. Then there's the reactive where you're just you're just beat up. You're just beat to shit and you need to take the week off and not train to allow your body to catch up. So mm. I am just not training. I'm not I don't do anything light now, which is kind of nice because anytime I step into the gym, 
I'm it's it, to me in my brain, it's just all out. And it's, it's, I, I hate to say, com- it's not combat. Combat is hero shit. Uh, it is though. I'm trying to make the point that it's just all out. It's all, you pushed all your chips in and you're just going and you're just going to, you're just going to kill everything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I, I also wanted to ask you specifically about fat burning supplements and fat burning tricks during prep. Like, do you have a list of stuff that you, you know, what's your secret sauce for, you know, the, the, the program running in the background while someone's dieting? Like, are you a like glucose disposal agent nut? You know, do you have them on 10 different things? What are we doing? Are you a thermogenic <laughs> guy? I just want to hear what, what your kind of current thinking is regarding that. And then also, well, let me are, add something in. How has that well, changed from, say, like yeah. 10, 15 years ago? How has that changed? Fair yeah. enough. Okay, fair enough. Uh, very little. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I'm not one of those people, I don't think, that gets locked into a specific, you know, well, this is how I do it. I'm going to continue to do it because it works, and I'm not going to look outside of this little, you know, this little formula or this little plan. But look, T4, T3, clan burns fat like melting butter in a pan for the vast majority of people uh ratios dosing you know personal tolerance anxiety levels uh things like that that things like that will play you know can play into it as well uh age uh too but look as far as i'm concerned and i you know it, it's tough because i don't know your position on a lot of things ron so i don't want to come over and stomp oh, on your feet easy uh, Ron, Ron, I'm let, not a big. Let, let me Go sum ahead. it up for you, Skip. Ron is basic. He's old school. It's okay. going to be black right. and white. That's what you get from Ron. Okay, fair am enough. I, am I right? Is I, that I, fair I, to say, Ron? Yeah, I just people micromanage minutia and they don't worry yes. about the things that actually matter. There yeah, that, I, that's. I mean, that's just so in line. Yeah, I, I've said before, if you have to do five different things and you're focused on them to get a half of a half of a percent then shelf it and go with and, and use the methods or the supplements or the, the ideology that actually is going to get you somewhere and focus on the 3% and the 5% and build on those. But uh, look, GDA, as far as I'm concerned, I, I don't know the last time I told somebody to take one. It's, it's not that they don't help or it's not that they don't work. It's just you have this much versus this much. You know, I remember the days of the green tea being a thermogen and things like that. I just, I just kind of laugh at. Does it have a mild thermogenic effect? Yes, it does. Antioxidants. I'd rather you use green tea for health concerns or antioxidant things like that than than trying to burn more fat. I don't think anybody's going to get lean drinking green tea. Is I guess is what I'm saying. So. I don't look too far out. I, I am one of those guys that when I hear about a supplement, I'll get clients will ask me about something. I'm like, I don't know. I've heard about it a few times. If I hear about it 10 times or 20 times, then I'll pay more attention and I'll look into it. If we, or if I, I speak for myself, if I looked into every supplement that I was ever asked about or something that starts to run into a trend or run into this, this phase that in another 10 months is going to be absolutely useless, I'd be wasting a lot of valuable time. So I don't do much with those types of things. I, look, DNP, I'm absolutely in, I'm anti DNP about as far, and I was way back in the day, and then I changed my my thoughts on it because I thought, well, there's this low dose protocol. You know what? I've never personally used it. I'm going to use it. Worked great the first time, incredibly well. Um, and when I say incredibly well, I'm going to be honest. I don't think it worked any better than T4, T3, Clan, but it it worked, and and it worked. Right comparably what just for a shorter period of time then i used it the second time i was like eh, i don't know i don't feel great i use the third time and it was just i won't get into it and go down that rabbit hole right now but because i've written articles about it and i've talked about it extensively yeah but i did it right contrary to what s2h <laughs> um battled me on uh and it it almost I, I say it almost killed me. I had congestive heart failure i was up 32 pounds i couldn't sleep that night because as soon as i would lie down I was convinced that I was going to have a, a heart attack. So it was just really oh, ugly wow. and it was really scary. And uh, yeah, I, I have to say this, Scott, and then I'll let it go. Just because you've heard me say it before, but it was a, we were in our dream home in 2016. It might've been seven, it, early in 17, but anyway, it was in there and I was in the <clears throat> basement because we had a gorgeous 
basement. That's where our bedroom was, our living room. The hot tub went out off the bedroom. It was gorgeous down there. I looked up. It was like three in the morning. I looked up because the kids were sleeping upstairs, obviously. And I thought they don't have any clue that, you know, that I'm in the position I am right now and I don't know what's going to happen. It was tough because I was getting advice from people that I trusted. I didn't want to go to the hospital because if they would have given me an IV, which they almost certainly would have in rural Colorado, they would have fought me on it and it, you know, I could have, I could have died from that. So it was just a really ugly situation and it's, it's ironic, but it's not uh, by definition that I stayed away from it for so long. I was so anti DNP. Mm. And then I went down that road and it worked well and I did it right. I did it correctly. I was on top of everything and it, it almost, it just almost got me. And I just, I hate the stuff. And I think it's a very, and this might seem like a contradiction, but it's a lazy way to get lean. I know that mm-hmm. T and the reason I say it's a contradiction is because people could say, well, your T4, T3 clan yeah. is a lazy way. It, it won't, it won't kill you. Like DNP has the potential to, no. <laughs> it, it, you don't, there's no antidote. It's not like you take insulin and well, I'll counter it with some glucose and, and save yourself. The antidote is to pack you in ice and pray and, you know, I'm not a very godly guy. Yeah. Uh, But at that time I was thinking, I don't know if there's a God, you know, you you could help me out right now. Maybe not for me, but maybe for my kids. I don't know. (laughs) I don't want my wife vacationing in Bora Bora in three weeks with a 23 year old. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm my life insurance policy. That bitch. I got to live three three weeks. weeks. That's a little harsh. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Two, two and a half, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> What's the half life on uh, DNP again? Like how? It's got a pretty short. Uh, half-life, too long. Isn't it? Yeah, it's long. It's, oh, it's, it's too long. It's long, and that's why it's a it's such a waiting game. It doesn't what is it, clear like thirty six hour half life or. Ah, uh, you know, you're, yeah, you, that number stands up. out because of clan, but I, I can't tell you the exact, I just know that it's so long that it's like, uh, and I knew I'm like, I, it's, I just have to wait this out. And, and to add insult to injury, I, I was holding so much water that I couldn't get, you know, I didn't want to eat much food because I didn't want it to trip the, the heat sense, you know, to increase the heat. Right. Yeah. Let me make sure I'm not getting ahead of myself here. I don't, I, cause I don't know if I said food or water. I didn't want to eat any more food. So I was cr- trying to keep obviously watering. I couldn't drink much water because I was so distended. Um, I didn't have ascites, but you can look up ascites and, and that's what I felt that I had where you get very, very distended. Like you look like a fat guy holding 40 pounds of, of abdominal fat. I don't know if you've seen those people, but that's what it feels yeah. like. And that's what ascites is. And it's usually with liver failure and things like that. Uh, I just felt that I just, I don't, I felt like death. I just, I felt, wow. and it was, I was trying not to tell my wife, but my wife knew something was going on. I didn't want her to panic because contrary to my little jokes about Bora Bora, she does think very highly of me <laughs> and I didn't want her to be panicked either. It was a very, very difficult situation i'm getting 10 to 10 to 14 hours i thought it was longer than that but that's what i'm getting 10 to 14 hour half-life still too long when you're waiting it out yeah Yeah. and you're going to compound it if you're taking it every day you know there's going to be that yeah and if i recall you were using the crystal dmp which is like a, a higher quality right uh you know version right and again the dosing wasn't very high it was just that it very quickly went it just went south. It, it, I like I said, I talk on it. I have already spoken more than I, I don't like even thinking about it or t- talking about it. To be honest with you. Yeah. You know what it is? Yeah. And this is the main reason I get that. Um, I get that feeling of being a dumbass. Like huh. I did something wrong, but I didn't. And, and that's why I bring up S2H. I don't want to bash the guy, continue to bash the guy over, but he did give me a lot of shit about it. And it was, yeah, tough for me because I knew that I didn't do anything wrong, but because I didn't do it exactly the way that he had, and and because and it wouldn't have made any difference anyway. Right, but right. Uh, he was taking advantage, of it and it was, um, you know, I, I I struggled with that. I didn't appreciate it. 
Yeah, it was a, it was a oh. tough thing, man. I know what it's like having gotten really sick and dealt with my own crap. It's like when it's you, when it, and you feel like it could be that time. It's it, you know, it has a mark, man. You're gonna take it personal. So I, I was I mad at myself because it was a decision that I had made that I yes. had always been against anyway, huh. um, and it had gone well, and it went relatively well the second time. I didn't run them back to back. If anybody's thinking that, I didn't. Right, there was right, nothing. Right. And I'm a variables guy. I mean, I didn't. I didn't change anything I, yeah. I'm, I'm the most boring guy on the planet i i just i do everything the same the diet is the same the train i say the same it's consistent over a long period of time i don't when i change variables yeah. and i i yell at my clients about this too don't change three or four variables change one maybe two because you're not going to be able to read the whys of why something worked or didn't work if you've changed a bunch of variables at, at one time yeah 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 <laughs> What else you got for us, That's Ron? That's crazy. That's crazy. Well, I had two Christmas topics <laughs> that I thought might be fun. All right. You guys up for that? Up for it. You guys, you, you, you have any, we're all like, you know, long time bodybuilders. So what's like, what are some of your earliest Christmas memories at with bodybuilding in your life? Like, you know, as a bodybuilder, because I remember being like, you know, a 14, 15, 16 year old bodybuilder and getting like, you know, gold's gym sweaters for Christmas and, mm -hmm. you know, the Gators gym hoodie for Christmas. And, you know, everyone's sort of making the jokes about you eating three plates of food and, you know, oh, I still need well, a whole don't, take <laughs> <laughs> don't take them all. Don't take all the stories, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, did you guys have, you guys have those memories as well? I, I tell you, I think the coolest thing that stands out, it's funny you say the Gold's Gym thing, uh, back, born and raised in Michigan, and we would always go to my grandmother's house, my dad's mom, and she was, she wasn't like grandmothers now, you know, like you see a grandmother now and they're kind of, sometimes they can be pretty hot, she was awesome, she was a little, <laughs> little old lady with white hair, and she was just the epitome of the most awesome grandmother, and not like the grandma you see on Pornhub. Yeah, Not exactly. like <laughs> yes. And when I say yeah. grandma, I just want to make sure the audience knows what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, like golden yeah. girls, grandma. Not one that I'd want to hear. Hey, some people are into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. There's a channel for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's gonna be a couple comments about smashing my grandma. I'm sure. So she's passed yeah. away. So don't don't make jokes about smashing smashing. Make grandma. all the jokes you want, uh, guys. Comment below helps to boost the <laughs> algorithm. <laughs> So it so she has a friend in Orange County and throughout the year she visits a couple times. She had gone into the Mecca 5 or 6 months prior to Christmas and had bought me my first ever Gold's not just Gold's Gym t-shirt but Gold's Gym that said Venice, California. Venice. I, I, like like you put that on and you go to the gym and, and lights come down like sun rays of sunshine and everything else darkens around you and you're just yeah. you're like oh like you leveled up you leveled yeah, up like yeah. I, I think i was bigger in that shirt i'm pretty yeah. sure i looked bigger in that absolutely. shirt absolutely and stronger i too. got that and i'm and it was funny because i was probably only 15 years old which is like it was perfect because i at that time was on my way well on my way to the olympia stage i just it was a formality <laughs> like i just had to right yeah i didn't right. really have a plan like the plan was just you go to the gym and you train and then you eat bur like two double whoppers at burger king but you had the most awesome workout because you got a pump it's those days when nothing else mattered you did everything right and it was just yeah. the most just the coolest i was, I was like I, my grandma got me i think the coolest gift that i had gotten as a teenager and i thought she she put thought it like she walked into this place that to her must have just been crazy that's the one that stands yeah. out to me that's that's a good one because i remember when you know if it said venice on it it's like oh were you there like you had the to only be way you there. got one yeah right yeah, no, you didn't but my grandma, line no but my grandma was <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 my grandma was yeah yeah <laughs> Oh, oh man. man! Yeah, my grandma's been there, but I haven't. I didn't think about it that way. I, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I got one. Now this isn't like this isn't old old. This is a little bit later. But I kept my Anytime Fitness membership simply because they were open on Christmas. That I knew there was going to yep. be like two days a year. 
that everything was going to be closed and I could still get to Anytime Fitness and I would make sure that I got a good workout in. In fact, I remember I remember one year and this isn't too this is 5 7, seven years ago maybe. I remember being single and feeling like, man, I don't have anybody on Christmas to do stuff with. I'm going to go hang out with my family. And I went to the gym. And, man, I had I had one of those workouts where you're, like, pacing and kind of, like, cussing under your breath between sets. You're, like, twitching a little bit. You know what I mean? And then you get back, like, a little bit short of breath. You realize that you're kind of yeah. breathing, you know, differently. Yeah. And you're getting amped up. And I didn't walk into that workout planning on that. I was like, oh, I'm going to go you know, hit the gym and then I'm going to go hang out with my family. And, uh, it was, it was a workout that was so good. Put it this way. I remember it to this day. And I, I can That's only it. attribute it to being Christmas and me dealing with all that emotional crap of having like a, you know, self pity and all that. He just took it all out on the weights. It's like you had a team of horses and they were just, yeah. just chomping at the bit exactly. the whole time and you had to let them go every once in a while to do a set. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. I love that. Yeah. It's funny that the, the training on Christmas Day thing is uh, it's there's all these different eras of it because I've I've done a lot of training on Christmas Day. Yeah. You know, I, I remember these different stages in my life where, you know, there's several times where, you know, the gym would be closed, but the owner would be like, hey, some right. of the boys are training at noon. Like yeah. I remember those days and you'd go in at like 11 a.m. or whatever and everyone would be kind of they all breakfast with their family or whatever and you'd kind of go in and you'd have this little midday workout with, you know, there'd be 10 or 15 of you in the gym, you know. And then I remember there was this long span of about 10 years where I would always fly out to visit my parents because they had moved and my friend owned the local gym. So just him and I would do legs on Christmas Day. Yeah. And it was like he'd unlock the gym lock the door, turn the music on, just two of us, and we'd bang out legs on Christmas Day. And that was like a long-standing tradition that we we did that, hammered that out. And uh, so there's a lot of great memories of like, you know, before there were 24-hour gyms around, you know, like yeah. before there were card lock, card lock gyms. And there was yeah. just, you know, you were one of the lucky, privileged few that actually got to train <laughs> Christmas Day. And yep. it's one of the reasons why we like, you know, we're open Christmas Day. That's why we try to be open Christmas Day. We're open from nine to one uh, every year since we opened. Have you, and, do you guys have a lot of people show up? Yeah, we'll get like a couple hundred people through the door nice. in that little four hour window. Yeah. And everyone's in such an awesome mood. Yeah. And they just they just so happy to get in and out of there. They're in, everyone's in, in and out pretty quick, you know, like people are walking fast and, you know, they got a lot of people have somewhere to be, but they're, they're, they're so happy to be able to get in there and train, you know, that is cool. And, um, yeah. You know how us fitness people are. We, we took a oh, break. Yeah. We had a little bit of, a little, had a little bit of junk at breakfast and our sister's annoying us and it'd be really nice to go squat. Yeah, you know exactly. <laughs> when did that change, though? Because Ron, you've been you've been around for a while. I know you're not clearly not as old as I am, but it changed <laughs> at some point because things used to be so like you you'd be hard pressed to find even a grocery store. Oh yeah, that was old. Yeah, you know, like say when I was like fifteen or you know I'm thinking this is what uh, mid mid eighties and then it just seemed I'm I mean, I'm trying to figure out when things maybe it was just a gym thing to where the gym at some point had become so popular that they knew they'd have people or maybe as a society we finally said we want things open on holidays like Christmas and Thanksgiving and things like because they would I remember gyms being closed I mean if it was New Year's Day gym was closed if the yeah. you know if it was Christmas yeah. clearly like the whole town was shut down maybe yeah. it was just a demo the demographic you know where I was at that time I don't know but something changed and 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 it could be as deep as social media opened up and you know, people are not as religious as they should. I don't know. I'm not trying to go down it's a rabbit a hole. Lot of I'm factors. Saying, I, it's a lot of factors. Yeah. You're right. All of them. All of them. There's guys, also like another thing too is like time is more valuable now because with inflation and the economy and what we all need to do with our time, like a lot of people are like, I need to work. Like yeah. I'm opening my business. Yeah. Like, you I'll guys closed down more though <laughs> up there. I noticed in Canada, there's a lot more closed than the U.S. Like U.S. is like another day. Everything's running. 
just when I've been Probably, in Canada, yeah, it seems like more stuff degree, does yeah. seem to close down for holidays. Because okay. yeah. Victoria's shocked too sometimes. She'll be like, oh, you will have to go to the grocery store today because we're not going to be able to tomorrow. And I'd be like, no, yeah. it's fine. They're going to be open. And she's like, what? Right, right. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, we're we're pretty good now. But I do think that's definitely true. I mean, you still, like, even now when we travel, like, if you go to England, there's still stuff that's not open Sunday in some oh, towns yeah. you know what i mean like there's still a lot mm-hmm. of old school stuff over there where like if it's sunday like you're not shopping like it's just kind of yeah, funny, I, you know i found that in the south of france they it was really odd to me they said the same thing you need to get any groceries anything you need on saturday i'm like what the hell would i do that for but it it was closed down like a holiday it was actually I, kind of i odd. remember i remember seeing a picture of dorian yates i'll never forget this leaning against his the door of his gym it's like an old picture like i remember seeing it in a magazine when i was a kid and he's leaning against the door with like a thumb up or something he's wearing an npc you know those zip ups that didn't have a hood on him oh yeah, he's wearing like <laughs> yeah, one of those. yeah and he's like standing by the door <clears throat> and the hours the temple gym hours i remember seeing them it was saturday 9 a.m to noon and then hmm. sunday was noon to three yeah. That was the weekend hours. Yep. And then wow. the weekday hours were like 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. or something like that. Right. Yeah. It was like short hours. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I remember thinking, oh, my gym's open way longer than that. Cause like, you know, Saturday was like 8 to 8. Yeah. Or 8 to mm-hmm. 6. Right. You know, and I was like, oh, I'm lucky. I guess because gyms in England aren't open that much. And then when I went to Australia, the gym I trained at, the weekend hours were nine to noon on Saturday and noon to three mm-hmm. on Sunday. And I was like, oh, wow, this is like an old school thing that is done like yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. it's just funny. And, you know, you'd go to train Sunday at noon and it would be packed because there's only three hours. Yeah, everybody had to get in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you got? Some listener questions there, buddy? Yeah, we've got a bunch of them. Um, so Dusty, or yeah, Dusty's not with us, but I did want to post this one for. I've got a reason too. He says, uh, "I don't know who has a better beard, Dusty or Fuad." So we could take a vote on that. You guys could vote, but I, I say that specifically because I have a picture. Could you imagine Skip with a mustache? I've got this picture here. <laughs> He's just sent this to me last week. This is classic. Check this out. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't that's more just unshaven than yeah. it's an actual I tell you what I'm impressed by there is no silver in any well there's a little bit I guess on my chin but compared to now I can't I just I never graduated to the full the ability to to have a full beard I it's like my face from a <laughs> follicular standpoint is still 14 years old you I would think with all the test you know you, you I, get, exactly it, I don't understand it. And that's but a no, Super Bowl it, it, ring, too, isn't it? Look. It is. That's Jimmy Kennedy's Super Bowl ring when he was with the Giants. And my mouth is open like that. He caught me right at that time because it's <laughs> so heavy. It's so, is so that heavy. in 89 when they won the 89 Super Bowl? <laughs> Not that old, you asshole. <laughs> I was 41 right there. God, you're terrible. No, I, I just I get lost, Skip. I, I, I lose which I, decade I, I, it was. I figured it was either 89 was, uh, or, uh, or was it 2013 uh, or something? His, what year did they win? Last Eli, was, right? His last was 2011. And I do know right. from the background, this is how meatheads work there. I immediately yeah. went to the background and went, oh, that's better bodies in Aurora. Where were we? Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot that they had that piece. Uh, anyway, it was it was 2011, I believe. It was last year with the Giants. He got a Super Bowl ring. He arguably should have gotten one with the Vikings, but Favre threw in the red zone. And it's hard to be mad at Favre because he is a legend. But he never should have made that pass in the red because they had that game locked and they were heavily favored to go into the Super Bowl and win. But whatever. It is what it is. Damn. All right. How about this one? Question for next time. Uh, Is there a machine you remember, good or bad, that you've never seen anywhere else? That's a difficult one because we've seen so much (laughs) shit. Like, what have I not? I remember the first time I saw a true squat at Armbrust. Yeah, and I and I used it, and and it was so unique to me because I, it did it. If you never use a true squat, it doesn't. It's very awkward at first because you don't expect it to take 
the path that it does. So you play, mm. have to play with your foot position so many times until you're like, because you feel like uh, there's no way I can squat in this. Like if I go down, I, I'm not going to yeah. be able to, <laughs> it's going to break my knees or something. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's you have the only to, like, thing. That, get used to it. Yeah, it's it's a it's an odd piece at, at first. That's the only thing that really comes to mind. I mean, what what have we not used? I well, if I can't one that you of, only saw one time, one that was like really unique, and you've never seen it again for better or worse. Maybe it's a crappy machine, like the worst yeah. machine you ever saw in your life. I I I I do remember one specifically. There was um, a chess supported row, and it was homemade. Because oh. the guy that owned the gym had like a lot of the equipment was welded. Like it was, and it was a, a chest supported row that was a one off, no brand. And it was just real simple. Just load the plates on the front. And, but the handle kind of had a swivel in it. So the handle kind of had some, a little bit of play. So, you know, you could really get like specific with your intent on the handles. But I don't know what it was about that chest supported row, but. I love that piece, and I have never, ever come across a chest-supported row that moved the same or felt the same ever since. And uh, I remember it was white with, like, a whole bunch of paint chipped off of it, yeah. and it had a blue <laughs> pad. And it was just the most kick-ass chest-supported row ever. And there's been many duplicated or many attempts to duplicate that, or I've seen many across the gym and thought, oh, maybe that's the one. And none of them feel the same. <laughs> you you kind of made me think of a couple. I was initially going to say um, at Powerhouse Farmington Hills, they had a, you know, you know, Free Motion is a real popular brand. Yeah. And do you guys remember before they had the selectorized stacks, they had the plate loaded versions with cables. Do you remember those? Yeah. Do you ever see those? Yes. You don't see those around much anymore. And we had one of the, the chest presses and you could kind of converge it. You know what I mean? And it would yep. run to a set of cables and the weights were in front of you there. And it was just, you would load like a plate on each side. I like that one, but you made me think of home weight, homemade equipment. There's this place and I just went to my my Facebook so I could grab these pictures. This place in Marquette, Michigan, it was called Joe's Gym. And the guy who owned it was a power lifter. And he did, he like, he fabricated a ton of stuff. So he had a, I don't think I have a picture of the chest press, but the chest press was like 400 pounds, which is insane for a chest press, you know? Empty. <laughs> here's a, here's a Smith machine that he had and he welded, it's a small gym. So see those, he welded those pins on the outside of the rack so you could also use it for free weights. Oh, okay. Ah, I see. Which yep, is pretty yep. cool. So he had all sorts of freaking stuff. Let me see if I can find one other one here. I mean, just, yeah, there's just so much. I could, I could keep digging here. But it was just this tiny hole in the wall and him and his buddies, you know, would, would train there. Like this is, this is the bathroom area. You know, it looked like that. That's there's like a that's in the gym itself, and then there's like one little door. You know, you go, you step inside. There's enough room to basically stand up or sit down with a toilet, and that's that's the whole gym. You know, it was like as that. if yeah. that dry. Put that back up real quick. As okay. if that and the mop dry is towel there. roll and they keep the mop is, in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not unsanitary <laughs> enough, but it's in the trash. Yeah, it's actually in the trash. <laughs> below the bottom of the edge of the trash. It goes down below the edge. Yeah, you that's know? good. All right. Remember the old days with those towels? Oh, man. Oh, those oh, are man. classic. How about this one, then? Um, would you rather work out in the absolute worst gym with terrible equipment, but it's the cleanest place you've ever been to, or would you rather work out in the dirtiest gym that has the best equipment in the world? Now, keep That's in mind no here, Skip, Ron likes clean cleanliness. Ron doesn't, oh, like, okay. Ron doesn't like germs, okay? So we got to okay. keep that well, in mind. Yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind if something is a little untidy, as long as it's sanitary, <laughs> right? Untidy. Okay. All right. Un Fair I don't enough. mind untidy. It's the sanitation. I want things to be, you know, germ free. It doesn't have to yeah. look new and nice, though. That's yeah. The, so that's a tough one because he doesn't. He doesn't mention the atmosphere. Oh. I mean, where Where is the atmosphere better? Where is the music better? Where is the energy higher? Because that's you know. I mean, he says the first one's the absolute worst gym, so maybe he's referring to that because he, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I don't know what he means by that, but I, I mean, I've trained in some, some gyms that most people would consider like terrible, 
um, cleanliness. And to me, they were all right because I just didn't let it bother me. Like, you know what I mean? Sometimes I'd clean something myself. There, now it's clean. That doesn't bother me anymore. <laughs> I figure you know in 40 I mean? years of training, if I haven't gotten I cooties yet, um, yeah, I'm, keep my immune I'm system probably strong. Gonna be, yeah, I'm like, eh, I'll be good. I'm, I'm a garage style. I love that beat up, yeah. the equipment this far apart where you hit your shin on something or your head on something. <laughs> yeah, that's all the my time. Shins have a lot Give of me just from the gyms. Dark, I've grown up in black. Yeah, exactly. You've been the, down here. Have you been to Miami before? Oh yeah. That's what I figure. I mean, some of those, you know, Iron Temple, I still think is arguably the best gym. Like, if I were just to have a garage style gym, I would want to replicate that place. And and it helps because the people who come in there are very, very serious because everything's so close together. It has to be. You know, when you're walking yeah. through the dumbbell area and someone is only, you know, six inches from you while you're doing dumbbell presses, I got to know that I'm at Iron Temple and not at 24 hour fitness because some clown walking right. six inches. 24 hour fitness is going to cause me potentially to injure myself. They're going to turn around. They're going to be goofing around and they're going to hit me and it's just going to be bad. So I, I, I do. I absolutely, that's one of my top two gyms ever, uh, but you don't usually get that garage style. Maybe you do with cleanliness, you know, cause rust and things like that, you know, especially down here, uh, you know, when you go to slide a, a, a 45 pound plate on a hammer strength, it doesn't, you don't just put it on and then it slides down. You have to like forcibly press it down because they're, <laughs> they're you know what I mean? Because there's like rust and you get home and you've got rust on your hands and, and things like that too. So, hey, why wash right. my hands? Good. <laughs> yeah, 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 a little rugged. I don't I'll, mind. I'll take the dirty gym. We have a gym yeah. here, Royal Oak Gym, and uh, it's 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 like if you look behind the leg press. They've never swept there or vacuumed there in their life. There's like, or like the back of the lake press, you could take your finger and just go, and there's like a big. Ron's like, getting anxious. Yeah, there's a big, <laughs> thick mess. You know, it's 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 yeah. a grungy gym, but it's got good energy. And I figure mm -hmm. you could just take a shower when you get home. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's yeah, like home with yeah. your wife, right? Yeah. I mean, give me a break. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and don't put anything on the floor. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Don't yeah, your bag. You be yeah. all right. All right. How about this one? I don't know what picture he's referring to, but he says that picture of Ron is hilarious. This is from last week. I don't know. I can't think of that. But he says, Patreon question. Um, uh, he wants to get pictures for his wall, the best poses thrown at the Olympia. Who would you guys pick to complete the set? Also, any unique shots like Jay's quad stomp? He says, I know that Dusty will pick something from Ronity, but I'm looking for variety. Dusty would have picked a Ronnie post. There's no question. Yeah, I mean, you get Ronnie from the back, you know, in a back double by or a rear lats. I mean, it's, of course, you get him from most angles. <laughs> it's it's yeah. going to be, it's going to be. Okay, yeah, I'll go old school and go uh, Gaspari. Hands yeah. on hips, most muscular. I, you know, and the reason I say it is more of out of nostalgia. I do think that Rich kind of changed the game to more of a condition uh you know he kind of flipped the switch at that time and, and took bodybuilding in in that 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 direction that general direction of of conditioning so to me that would be a more of a nostalgia especially his back double bicep in the black and white where he had his lifting belt on and right down the back all that sweat had gone down into his leather belt and you could see that it was sweat stained if you will you know yeah, in the yeah, middle yeah. that to me is a very iconic picture but you know he might not be as old as i am either doesn't know <laughs> what that right. shot is i would say like a really killer front lat spread from dorian like a classic like from 93 hitting his front lat spread there's a few great shots of dorian doing front lat spreads on stage at the olympia if that's what he's looking for that'd be good would, you know live forever there's hey a front double from Haney, even though technically you know we say Haney's arms weren't the best or whatever, but his front double is just an iconic like, you know, eight years of Mr. Olympia kind of captured in in an in an image, you know, like that was like at the time like people people who weren't around like I caught the very tail end of Lee Haney, you know, he was Mr. Olympia when I started training. I caught the very end of his reign, and like. At that point, I came in and he's already like, you know, six time champ when I start lifting, yeah. right? And so he was just seen as a god. Like, oh, he yeah. was just like, 
it was, you know, he was just written off as the greatest ever. Like it was, you know, by the time he won his eighth one, it was just like unbelievable, you know, that he beat Arnold's record. It was it blew everyone's mm-hmm. mind, you know, people I've forget the, about him now. I've got the yeah. front double. I've got him doing hitting a front double on in my gym. Yeah. It's like the or first picture, front, to, you know, there, there you go. The front last spread on the manhole cover. Yeah. Standing That's, on the street with I, the jeans on. Exactly. Uh, oh, I mean, yeah, that's a yeah. pretty iconic picture right there as well. Not a Marilyn yeah. Monroe, if you will, but from bodybuilding, <laughs> in bodybuilding terms, it is the Marilyn Monroe shot or one of them from, from bodybuilding yeah. too. So. Yeah. I, I think I heard a story about that picture was sort of an afterthought during a shoot. You know what I mean? Like he had put his jeans on, like it wasn't like planned. No kidding. And, oh. You know, they were like, hey, let's like, have an idea. Like it was kind of one of those things. But yeah, that's a classic shot, man. There's mm-hmm. a lot of great ones. You know, if you if you want them to be from on stage, then, you know, you're definitely picking a certain genre of picture now, you know? Yeah. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna be thinking of specific guys. If if you're gonna make it the Olympia stage specifically, well now, you know, like you know, it's not a lot of like like how many legendary iconic shots are we thinking of here? Does he have room for five on his wall, ten on his wall? Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But yeah. I've got a poster. Most iconic stage shot. I see the one Arnold on stage. I see the one with the the arms out, with the audience behind him. You know the shot I'm talking about. You know that's funny. I thought the same thing, but I think it's because I saw it in an ad on Facebook. So the advertising is very. What's a famous poster, right? (laughs) Yeah, use that as a banner a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of my clients gave me that, and he also gave me a picture I'd never seen before, and it's got to be fake plates. It's Ronnie in a squat rack and he's got like eight plates on each side and he's down in the hole and he's like "Ah!" i've never seen that picture before black and white i mean maybe it wasn't originally black and white i hung it up over my hack squat but i'm thinking like i don't i feel like you you don't just do eight plates in a in a photo shoot like that you know what i'm saying and it's definitely a staged photo shoot you know yeah it might be chris maybe it's chris lund and he's got four fake plates on there yeah <laughs> yeah you know because i know you know or no sorry chris lund wouldn't use fake weights i'm thinking of someone else okay chris lund was a guy that was shooting john pierre fuchs when he blew both his oh yeah. yeah okay yeah and he was encouraging him to put six plates on because he was squatting six plates when they tore mm-hmm. and he was like no nah, let's get a good shot let's put six on you can do it yeah yeah he said he was he happy that happened though he was like well the first my first thought was oh my god i don't have to do this anymore I've heard that as well. I didn't know if, how true it was, but I heard that too. I heard him say it on a podcast. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Check out this really? picture. That's I, amazing. When I went to Facebook uh, to find Joe's gym, I saw, look at this uh, lovely couple here. You know, nobody says his last <laughs> name. Oh, goodness. Look at that. Is that this your, is from your, is that your holiday Yeah, we one? just got, yeah, we got a Christmas party on Saturday night. So freaking classy. We weren't wearing sweats. You clean up well, so you use the uh, the pit bull for that. Is that what yeah, it's called? Yeah, yeah. The pit yeah, bull shaver. Pit bull head shave. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Free play. Oh, yeah. I guess bull. you were in that picture, too. I, it took me a <laughs> My bad. I... <laughs> yep. 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 I get away with it once in a while. Get away with it. Oh, we got one for Ron here. <laughs> Quick question for Ron. Which one? Gleaming the cube, rad, or thrashing? Well, geez, they're all three are almost unwatchable. Um, <laughs> they really are. They really um, are. You know, like I've seen Rad so many times, and the only part of Rad that's watchable is like the intro credits. Oh and, yeah, and 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 uh, some of the stunt, some of the stunt riding is just like because it's all pros that they paid to like you know do the, do all the tricks right. Um, Thrashing was terrible. That was really terrible. That's hard to watch now. And Gleaming the Cube would be the newest of the three, I think. Wasn't it technically in the 90s even? And that was Christian Slater, right? Okay. I didn't. It? Yeah, I don't remember Ooh, that. I, I don't remember who it was. Cube. Huh. I remember yeah, I watching Rad was. like 500 times when I was a yeah. kid. Oh, 1989 was Gleaming the Cube. So you're so close. It was, yeah. Uh, yeah. And it was Christian Slater. So it's like the most high, high budget of the three. You know what I mean? And I've seen the other two probably 20 times each. So I'd probably watch, if I had to watch one of them again, I'd probably watch Gleaming the Cube because I think I only saw it once. Yeah. But 
But yeah, but yeah, I got rad in my bones, you know. I mean, that was what I saw when I was a kid that made me want to ride BMX. Me too. Mm-hmm. And then Team Haro came to town, and they had like the oh, local yeah. bike shop had brought them in, and I got to see them do tricks, and it was like, man, oh. you know. What'd you guys yeah. ride? I did Dino Back. Detour. Mm. What'd you I say? Rode, I rode a, I rode a Haro Sport, and then I had a Haro oh, Master. Okay. I wish and I had a Haro. I. My parents weren't that cool. If they didn't uh, that apparently, party. my parents weren't very cool because I had a Huffy, and it was called a boy's 20, 20 inch buckaroo <laughs> with a banana seat on it. I'm not kidding. I got a picture of it on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. I could, we couldn't afford that. I'd go down to the shop, and I'd look at the red line and oh, yeah. you know, mongoose and stuff, and, and probably Haro. It was mid, uh, mid and early 80s. Uh, I mean, yeah, remember yeah. Torker. Torker doesn't get much mentioned yeah. much anymore. Maybe it wasn't as good. I, I don't know. Oh, no, back in the day, Torker was good. Yeah, yeah. That company got sold in the 80s. Um, the reason I got to have a good bike, I, I remember there were so many examples when I was a kid of I'd want to do something. And I'd yeah. say to my mom and dad, um, hey, I'd like to, you know, like join martial arts or I want to, you know, BMX bike, or I want to start going to the gym, or whatever my thing was when I was a kid, I would say it to them. And then my mom would always do math in her head. And it was because okay. my brother played hockey. Oh, it was like a real hardcore hockey kid. And I remember she kind of told me, like, I'm not doing 5 a.m.s anymore for you. I'm not doing another son. Like, <laughs> I didn't really want to play hockey. I didn't really want to play hockey, right? I Which thought you were going to say she didn't really want you. I wasn't no, sure where that she was going. Like, I don't want to be a ho- like I knew she didn't want to be another hockey a hockey mom again, yeah. you know. And so, and of course, hockey's so expensive and all the gas. Mm-hmm. Like she'd do the math on how many times she'd have to drive my brother. She's like, we spent a lot of money on hockey, so mm-hmm. nothing I did even came close to costing what hockey costs, and it required none of her time. Yeah. 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 So I would always kind of like math or I'd be like, if you get me this bike, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> that's a, and as a parent, you know, you're like, oh, that's a pretty sweet as a parent. Kid. You're yeah. home free. The bike will yeah. raise me yeah. all day on weekends. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you, done, have to drive anywhere. you even have to know where I am. You have to know where I am. <laughs> there may be the I'll occasional be hospital start. visit. But besides that, right. you know, I get a call good. once in a while. Yeah. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good shit all right which human is healthier the average american eating fast food drinking not exercising not hydrating or sleeping correctly um or a national level bodybuilder who's monitoring blood work but using gear somewhat healthy well there's a lot or, of- excuse me somewhat heavily there, there is a, a lot there, in there, yeah. What yeah, comes to mind t- first? Well, time time is the biggest factor. How long yeah. has this person been unhealthy and how long has this loader been smashing cycles and weighing <laughs> 300 pounds? <laughs> so those are the two things. Because, you know, time is, time is the killer variable with everything. Yep. Yeah. You know, the longer you do something, the more it matters. So that would be the factor, you know. It could be either or, you know, if they're both in the, if they're, you know, if, um, if they're in their twenties, I'd say the obese, unhealthy person's probably worse off. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if, yeah, if the, if the loader's 60 and he's still cranking. <laughs> How about, I, I mean, 53, 53, 54, hypothetically, I'm asking for a friend. But. <laughs> That's funny. Let's just say I feel but, better. Then I probably well, he am. said let's put it that way. He said monitoring blood work, but he didn't say the blood work was good. That was <laughs> right. like the, yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 I get my blood checked all the time. You know? It's but what horrible, does that mean? But I know what those yeah, numbers are. <laughs> I'm aware. I'm aware. It's the first step to recovery. Yeah. If the blood work looks good, then that tells you a lot. But that's just my my caveat. <laughs> about this one we got one uh what's the worst or weirdest interactions you've had at an expo this is from patreon Hmm. i've got one but i'm not going to talk about it on i can't i can't because out of respect for the person is okay no yeah i'll tell you after though all right well you have to say the name like right away is it is it something that if you tell the story you have to say the name or the story doesn't work so you just can't really tell the story 
right? Uh, I, I can just say this. I, it wasn't an uh, it wasn't an expo. It was a show. Okay, you've been Ron. You're at expos all the time. I'm not yeah, yeah. Um, that popular. No one really cares to pay me to be to, at an expo. S- Scott was like, I don't want to go to the Arnold Expo in 2019 by myself. Will you please go? And I'm like, okay. So I wasn't paid. I was not there out of obligation. Skip was <laughs> so, so anyway. tan. Skip was so tan at the Arnold 2019 that people were looking at him. They're going, Hey, man, good luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I remember. I, like I, didn't I? Didn't I shake your hand at that? I think I saw you guys yeah. when we stopped and chatted. Yeah, yeah. You guys oh, yeah. were leaving the booth. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you were pretty. It, dark. Was, uh, it, it was just a conversation that I had with someone that was so. I almost. I'm not going to say it because I don't want them to. No, I don't want to do it. I don't okay. want to do it. Too much respect for the person. <sighs> I can't. When I know. They say I know sh- I, oh, uh, you have to tell me after. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll jump I'll in and tell. And I'm sorry for the listeners. That's just something that I, out of respect, I'm just not going to do it. Right, right. It, I'd say the awkward, weirdest ones for me. Um, there's just some people, they, they don't have a time switch. Like, it doesn't occur to them that they've been talking to you for 25 minutes and that, there's other people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Ron, I'm whatever. sitting right here. That's such a yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> mean. No, no, but just some people that were, you know, um, they'll like stay and continue to talk, and there's p- people piling up behind them. Oh yeah, you know, and and of course, like that's normal. It's like you don't have to rush. Like we want to take some, a few minutes and talk to everybody. But the odd person is um, they don't really have a time switch. So they just don't really realize. So it, it becomes a little difficult sometimes because you're, and then maybe they'll kind of stay. So now the one person goes and they'll come back and it's like, no, no, there's someone else and someone else. And it's almost like they keep getting in between every second person trying to come back and keep talking. Yeah. That can happen sometimes, which is just sort of a weird sort of like social skill thing that's missing. But I'd say the most awkward was probably like, there's been a couple of times where you're like, you know, this guy want me to bang his wife. It's weird. <laughs> Like, is it? Well, you yeah. Know, oh, yeah. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. That's just weird. Caught me off guard. Wait, is that weird? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember, Remember the industry you're in. Vanilla though. or lifestyle. Remember the question, Skip? Yeah. Vanilla or lifestyle. Is that, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, <laughs> that's our industry. The vast majority, the large percentage of people in the bodybuilding industry are swingers. That's just like a known. So you are going to run into that. You probably run into it more often than you know yeah. or that you picked up on. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, hey, running into it's one thing, but when it's like, you know, like I've run into it before where it's it's not awkward. Like, ah, oh, hey, thanks for the offer. <laughs> yeah. yeah <right. laughs> but but then there's times when you're like, I don't even like, who are you people? Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. 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 You weird. thirsty. <laughs> yeah. This is weird. You know what I felt bad at in in the 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 mutant booth, and then other times too at, at any type of expo, is I'll be standing there and there's nobody there talking to you, you know, and then somebody comes up and they're talking, and once they start, like three other people come up, and then I'm like, oh, hold on just a minute, hold on just a minute, and then those people, like everybody leaves, and there's only one, and I didn't get to say hi to the other people. Like I feel like I kind of blew them off when I wasn't intentionally trying to do that, and then. Right. By the next 20 minutes, I'm not talking to anybody at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like right. there's those those things that happen. I can't think of anything, though, that's that's super weird that I can say on the podcast. I, I would say probably the most annoying thing at booths is you get the odd person that comes up and they instantly just want to talk about steroids. Oh, yeah, yeah. And 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 it'll be some kid and you you know you're totally up to like help any young guy that comes up with questions, right? But he'll come up and you're expecting maybe like, "Hey man, you know I've been training a year, you know I'm really motivated by the sh- or whatever." That you expect to hear like that type of stuff. Yeah. Like, what do you think about like, 300 yeah, minutes a year. Train. Yeah, but I'm like my trends at 500, but like people yeah. tell me it's too high and you're like, "What what what? Like my brain is can't absorb yeah. this. You don't even look like you you don't even look like you're on juice." And yeah, you're on 500 trend. Like, what the hell's going on here? So, like that 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 stuff is, and I hate dealing with that stuff. I'm like, ah, oh, I think I don't, I, I don't want to mm-hmm. be the guy who has, feels obligated to talk you off the ledge. Like, yeah. why? You know what I mean? Like, not right now. 
Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you do when you run into that skip? You know, it's always awkward for me. I catch myself. I don't know if I do it like obviously, but I, I look around like who is going to like, is there an impressionable kid standing here who might not have much knowledge about this and they're going to hear me talking like it's just, common and it is i understand that it's common but it's still even as long as i have dealt with it and as long as i've been in the game it's still awkward for me when it comes to the gear conversations we're talking about things on the podcast and and you know that's different we're trying to give knowledge and trying to keep people as you know safe as as possible and and not have them do it any more shit than they need to but i just i've never got you know I, i'll do i remember in fort lauderdale i do my walks and and a guy stopped, hey, and he acted like he knew me. So he wheeled back around in traffic, stopped. I go over thinking I know him. And he, and I'm not, this is just so bizarre to me. He's like, you, you know, I just, I know you're just doing your walk and everything, but, you know, I can't find, I don't know if he said trend or, you know, I can't seem to get EQ. Is there any chance? And oh, I remember I told me. this story. I told, no, I told this on BSG. And I, the only thing that came to mind was I told him, I said, your timing is horrible. You could have asked anybody else walking down the street, but you asked a DEA agent. And his, his, <laughs> he'd do like this, and he didn't say another word, and he just drove off. And I thought, I just impersonated a DEA, you know, a federal <laughs> officer, but not with ill intent. So I don't think I would be prosecuted for doing that. <laughs> But that's the only thing that could, I'm just like, you're, I, and I just was dumbfounded that someone would stop in traffic, turn around. And I thought I knew, like, I thought I must know this guy. I've had, I had a cop stop me one time. He was on a, I'm doing my walk and he's on a motorcycle and he wheels around. And I'm like, oh, oh shit. You know, did I witness something? Does he know that I just got 10 kids of growth to my health? So he comes up and he's like, Skip, I thought I might run into you at some point because I knew you were in the area. We just got to chat and he read my articles on Elite, said he followed me for a long time. Things nice. like that. I'm, I'm totally like I'm wickedly flattered. Yeah. That'll never oh, yeah. get old. But I yeah. still laugh at the full celebrity status of it all because I'm like I'm just a dude, man. Like I'm like he, yeah, yeah. I'm like we, we'll get brunch. And he's like I'd love to get brunch. And I'm like we'll get brunch. I'll call you this weekend. I mean I don't I don't have yeah, yeah. this long string of fans and friends. I, I'm just a normal dude, man. If you're going to throw down French toast together, give you know <laughs> holler at me. Here's my Any, number. Anybody who wants to eat French yeah, toast, yeah. you can message Skip personally or comment yeah, below. Yeah. I did not yeah, give yeah. him my there address. <laughs> yeah. He's going to have to do his work on that one. Yeah, just punch <laughs> yeah. it into the computer, you know. <laughs> you due diligent, pal. Yeah, exactly. We already know your address, Skip. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. we got a couple more here. We'll, we'll try to blast through. I want. I told this guy I wanted to get it on the show because he's been listening to us recently, and he messaged me on uh, uh, what do you call it, Instagram. And I told him go to the go to the uh, the Facebook page, guys. This is where we take all the comments, comment on the latest episode. Deal is he has Hashimoto's. He says, "What tips can you? Uh, what tips do you guys have for someone with Hashimoto's, especially for getting in contest shape?" Currently in a rebound phase uh, and made great progress this year with my new coach. Any extra tips are welcomed. So yeah, I think you stay with your new coach. You made good progress and he understands the ins and outs of the specific. It, it's different for everybody. I know I just jumped in ahead of everybody. Sorry about that. Sorry. I, that I'm gonna, I'll, that's my answer, though. It's so different. People react differently. And if you've got a, I always say if you've got a good coach and things are going well, I mean, you know, if you're going to if you're going to call one of us and pay us, okay, I don't. Stay with who you have. Stay with who you're working with, and and especially if they understand the situation that, that you're dealing with that is uh, different from you know most other people. You're a step ahead of the game. Yeah, I told him on DM too. I was like, with with any type of autoimmune issue, rest, de stressing. Those are the most important things. You know, I found, and you might have seen this, Skip, that. If you have somebody with any type of autoimmune stuff, sometimes putting more stress on them can reverse the like the fat loss process. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you start pumping the cardio up and all of a sudden they just kind of lock up and nothing changes. And it's like yeah. sometimes you need to pull that back and kind of chill. So just for mindset, just do your best to try to make sure you unplug at the end of the night. Make sure that you do everything you can to get your body in. And I almost look at it like this. Like right after you've gotten really sick, like you catch the flu or whatever, that next few days when you're feeling better, you're not going to go out and try to do the hardest thing you ever did. You're going to remember <laughs> like, okay, yeah, I feel all right, but I'm going to be careful now because I know that my system is kind of compromised here. Yeah. I would say make the, 
kind of live your life like that, especially when you're in like a prep scenario. Mm -hmm. And we all deal with, you know, different, you know, we've all been training people long enough. We deal with, um, you know, extraordinary situations and individual situations. But Scott, have you ever noticed that I, I back away from advice like the on topics like this when they're public if it's a client it's completely different because then you can kind of dig into the minutia and you can get the details and you know it's very nuanced yeah. so it's i find it mm-hmm. difficult i i struggle with the scope of practice i understand he was just asking for tips i mean he's not asking for medical advice and, yeah. and what um, supplements you know, should i run you but sure. you might get yeah, people who are like that. oh you should get on ashwagandha and take this you know what i mean yeah. right <laughs> yeah 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 but i just think that's a it's the it's something I've always been careful with. It's it, to me, it's just, it's scope of practice. I, I don't want anyone to ever think that I'm, and I don't want to say that given the, that advice is bad. He, again, he's asking for tips. I just don't want any, anybody to ever misconstrue something that, that I say as, you know, medical advice or, or, uh, you know, especially we have doctors who listen. I have clients who are doctors and, and I, I guess I'm just trying to be respectful in the sense that that's, you got to be careful with, with those things that are out of the ordinary. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, there's all that, you know, watch what wheelhouse you you actually know about. Yeah, and exactly. Don't make, don't make, I, I know as you get older, you don't want to make like any sort of claims or anything like that. I'm really careful. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I would say just, I mean, obviously if he's, you know, been diagnosed, he's probably had blood work done where they actually checked his T3 and T4 and not yeah. just TSH. So he's probably been through all that, but that would be, you know, that's the only way to, you know, really check out your actual thyroid but he's probably already been down that path so i don't really have anything to say to him all right i do have a couple comments i wanted to make note of michaela acock she was extremely offended by ron for trashing her bluetooth camera clicker so i heard from a lot of people on this (laughs) i was just trying to help them there's a better way yeah so Tell Skip like, what's your what's your thing because I don't think he knows what you're the deal. Oh, so you see everyone putting the clicker in their mouth now, right? Yeah. So I mean, it's great. You're getting good pictures. Awesome. Win win. I'm just suggesting that I prefer a timer that does a countdown because I have one. It says like, you know, you get ready for your side chest, and it says three, two, one, click, and then you have ten seconds to get into your next pose, and you hear three, two, one, click. And you just run through all your mandatories and it's just time lapse and it just takes a sure. picture every 10 seconds for like however many pictures you set it for. So you run through your quarter turns, front, double, back, you know, hit everything. And then you got a full set of picks. And it also trains you to be on time with your pose instead mm-hmm. of wait, instead of, you know, taking as long as you want to be perfect and then biting down on the timer. So I was just suggesting to people that if you go with a, a countdown app like I use, then you're required to be perfectly posed every 10 seconds. And it actually feels like you're doing a round of call outs and you can set the, the time periods and everything too, you know? So you can actually simulate call outs with it where you have to be on time. And it's not about you choosing when the picture is taken. And, like and then it. the, and then the added bonus is you don't have all these amazing pictures of your body with this thing in your mouth that looks funny (laughs) right right like if you want like if you're gonna post a progress picture don't wouldn't you rather not have the weird thing in your mouth of every picture that looks like you got like a black tongue sticking out yeah people were commenting they're like i wondered what that was i thought it was a mouth hurt or something i didn't know what they were doing don't even know what it is it looks so weird and it 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 all the way in your mouth use the tongue (laughs) that won't look well, you just push, you just push with the tongue. You don't see it. Yeah, it's funny. It just it annoys just me because I'm like, thing? there's a better way. That's all. I just, yeah. I just, I used to do it the wrong way. And you know, it's funny when you give someone, <laughs> you, it, you learn this when working with clients. If you leave any loophole at all, they'll find it. Right. <laughs> I mean, if there's right. any gray area, they find it. So I would, I'm like, especially because I run across people and they're like. I think I'm not tech savvy, but some people are just like, I don't know. I can't figure out the timer. And it's like, it's just not rocket science, but whatever. So what I would do is I'd, I'd like, just take a video and pull the frames. Yeah. Right. Which right. is pretty easy to do. But then what you get <clears throat> is you get so many frames to pick from 
that you get the absolute perfect frame and they have twisted just at the right. They have 20 or 25, 30 shots to pick from. And then yeah. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. You don't always look the same. So no, I'm just not, this isn't a very good idea. I like <laughs> right. <your time>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My criticism of the video stills was that again, you might've only hit the pose for a half a second. And now yeah. you're sending me a picture of the pose and I think you hit it. But then when you actually get up on stage, you can't keep your quads tight and you're not holding your waist in and it doesn't look the same. Right. Okay. And Scott's have, moving us on. Oh, we, Justin. What's yeah, up, Yeah, we have one more from Justin Shire. Now, he says his brother would have made for a better pro than him, and here's why. He says, my brother, who would have been a better bodybuilder than me if he ever tried. It, remember, we we're talking about trying to game plan a buffet. Yes. He said yes. he would eat with us at a breakfast buffet uh, with myself and my family. He would clear six to seven plates for everyone's two to three. We would all be ready to leave, but he would have held us up for uh, uh, 20 minutes, um, held out for 20 minutes for the lunch buffet to start coming we would all be leaving and piling in the car and would be getting a plate for lunch portion uh, and meeting us in the car with an ice cream cone after having eight to ten plates of food he always had a six pack and 18 inch arms bigger calves than me and didn't even work out plus he had a small waist so justin's brother could have been could have been a pro it must be genetics in the family you know what i mean yeah yeah i've it's there's a lot of people like Johnny Jackson's older brother who actually passed away like many, many years ago when, when Johnny was like just a young bodybuilder. Okay. But his older brother was actually like Johnny always said that his older brother was the better bodybuilder. You know what I mean? And um, he always said that that's why he got into bodybuilding was, was because of his, his older brother got him into it. Hmm. So here, I'm going to send you a picture. Isn't um, uh Dexter Jackson, cousins to Tricky Jackson, I believe. Oh, possibly. There, I, I just sent so. you a picture. Let's see here. Waiting for it to come through. Did you send it on text? Yeah. There it is. There we go. Hold on. We're loading. Boom. Who's this? That's Justin's brother. It's Jason. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he stopped me at the Olympia. He stopped me and goes, hey. You're, 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 uh, I'm Justin Shire's brother. And I was like, oh shit. I heard a lot about you. Cause like, I know he, he used to, I think he rode BMX too. He was like oh, okay. a BMX rider too. Yeah. And like, anyways, good he guy. Doesn't... So we just stopped. And then I said, let's send your brother a picture. And he, and said, he doesn't okay, look and fat. Look at his face. Good. He's eating eight. Right. No, he's in great shape. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah. So yeah. Just, genetics could uh, never uh, be under, uh, under, I don't know. What's the word Just I'm looking a for? Genetically gifted marijuana farmer from Oregon. Yeah. <laughs> right? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I said, let's do a picture for your brother. And I go, I go, is is it okay if we finger him? And he like he says, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. And Justin Shire's wife just turned pro. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Congrats see to that? her. see that? Jasmine. Yeah. Yep. So let's send a congrats out to her because I know Justin, you know, he's a great guy and he actually does watch the show sometimes. So let's send a congrats out to Jazz. So, you know, have any something going on in that household. Not they yet. Have any no. kids? Okay. Because, I mean, I've been in the game for a while, but I mean, in the next 20 years, they may, you know, they may have kids or offspring that are going to be getting pro cars. So they end up like uh, Chad and Kim's kids. Yeah. Freaks of right. nature. <laughs> Yeah, man. Crazy, eh? Oh, you wonder oh. the, the whole nature meets nurture, you know? <laughs> that younger one, I mean, they're both crazy it, it, genetically. But that younger Let's one, see. if he came knocking on my door in the eighth grade with a full beard and benching 365, I, I, I don't, I'd probably make my wife answer the door. I'm like, you need to tell him <laughs> to go somewhere else. Because I'm not, Skip's not I, home. I don't, I don't want to get beat up by an eighth grader. <laughs> <laughs> and then drag my daughter out and, and take her on a date and return her when you feel like it. No, I can't. That's yeah, my dad. Yeah. My dad stuff. <laughs> Jeez. And, my, and if you know my wife, my wife's vicious anyway. All the all of our kids' as friends are always more scared of my, my uh, wife than, than they ever were of me. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, that's funny. Oh. So, Scott, is that it for listener questions? That's all we've got, you guys. Please you uh, comment for the next show. Leave us questions, comments, all that stuff. It helps boost, in the, boost us in the show. You guys are doing a great job at that, by the way. 
um, Ron, I put out a, um, a reaction video with uh, John Hansen, who's like, he's literally like the biggest bodybuilding historian I know. We watched yep. the, the comeback, that 1980 I Arnold movie. I started it this morning. Did I you? I started watching your episode this morning. I, I was like, oh, this would be great with John Hansen because he's yeah. great. Dude, he knew and everybody. Was, he was like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, this guy owned a bar in California and he was good friends with <laughs> Arnold. And <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like that sort of stuff. I love that stuff. You know, yeah. it's one thing to just yeah. know who they are. Like, that's Eduardo Kowak. Yeah. You know, like yeah. to just have like the roll call, which is something I might have like decently as I got really good roll call with like the classic guys. Right. You but, but you but, I think you shine, though, like when we get into the 90s, into the 2000s, yes, that's where yes. you really shine, you know, definitely. But like it's just like Dino too. like Dino has stories like you see a picture of like, you know, Roy Callender. You know, yeah. from the 80s. And yeah. he'll be like, oh, yeah, but this one time he guest posed in London at a local show. And there was, and he'll have like a story about him. And he's just yeah. like, man, this story is from like 1985. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is crazy. I use those car sponges for grips. And let me tell you, they worked better than anything I've ever <laughs> used in my sponges. life for grips. Wait, yeah. what is this? I don't know what you're talking about. Roy Callender used, uh, he took car wash sponge and he cut it in half and used it for grips for pressing and i gotta tell you yeah he put it was in his hands and wrap it around the yes bar. wow but I, just try it if you never even want to train like that but just try it. the grip is insanely good it's huh. crazy huh yeah it's just it almost crazy. seals around the bar and then it squishes yes. out between your fingers oh wow you yep. almost have like this grip on the bar it's like molded to your hands that's how it feels yep. So is the sponge like a soft sponge or is it wet? Yeah, it's or a car wet? wash sponge. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. not wet. You don't soap it up before yeah. you no, no. <laughs> soap it up, <laughs> put it out, <laughs> put it in your hand. Yeah. Well, it, but it's it it and it looks. I mean, especially in the eighties, it looked hardcore. So I'm teenager. I'm like, oh yeah, I got to do that. I'm gonna get huge, like you know, Roy. Now, no, yeah. it's funny you hear you say, uh, Kowak. Oh, man, some of these names, I, you just. Over time, you just for I don't say forget, but they just you, you, I haven't heard that name in a long time. Yeah, 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 yeah. We watched an old, we watched a couple old videos. We watched one of those old eighties videos, didn't we, Scott? We did. It was good. Uh, one of the Olympias. Yeah. So yeah, we oh. got we, we we hit some old eighties footage on the reaction. It was pretty cool. But I really love I'll what people are saying about the reaction. I'm glad they're having fun watching them. You know, they're just just trying to be fun and bring some of that old content back out so people can see it because yeah. I, I I still think one of my favorite things about this show and the content we put out and the reaction videos now is, you know, you, you want, I guess it's like anyone, you, you want to at least make sure that the next generation kind of know where they come from and mm -hmm. why they're, why things are the way they are. Absolutely. They don't have to like it, yeah. but I want, I want people to understand it. Like, yeah. oh, that. Mm -hmm. so that's where that comes from and that's what they were doing for decades and that's why they did that and and you know even the mistakes too like that's why we talk about what we would do differently all the time and we say what our biggest screw-ups were and all that we're just trying to make sure people know like bodybuilding now like why is it what it is yeah you know and mm -hmm. it all comes from like starts back in the you know all the 70s and 80s and it all leads up to now so those old reaction videos are great and i'm looking forward to finishing that one with john hansen so, okay. What's our next reaction? Do we have one already filmed? We don't. We, we, have, we, we have nothing out. left. Yeah, we are libraried out at this point. So we got to come up with something. Okay. Okay. Well, we will do more of those then because people have been really liking the type of videos we've been doing, you know, like these kind of really great like 90s-ish, Yeah. you know, a bit retro. So I pulled together a bunch of links to, do you remember... Uh, what was it? American Muscle Magazine, the TV show. Yes. I have a bunch yeah, of segments so of that, and I thought that we might be able to do a reaction to just like two or three of them back to back and see these little Absolutely. segments yeah, yeah. of like, you know, Flex Wheeler training at Gold's Gym, pulling up in a cool car and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, training in a unit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, and that's remember everybody. Is... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Different, I different word. Said it. I almost said so, it. <laughs> so uh, remember, everybody, we, we appreciate uh, heading to immutant.com. Use the codes Dusty20 and BigRon20. Get your 20% off. Ice will surge. Get your all in. And everyone should get on the gear. There we go. Immutant.com. 
Um, thanks for coming on, Skip. We really appreciate having you on yeah, and just hearing you know, your views on things. And uh, it was good to have you on. Um, and remember, like, share, subscribe, comment, and ring that bell. There you go. <laughs> you had good timing awesome. on that, too. You had good. That was good. Yeah, yeah, that was good. That was good. Okay, remember, everybody, it's just bodybuilding. <laughs>